Welcome back to the lab folks. So today I want to talk a little bit about power supplies. So uh, you know, for portable equipment, uh, rechargeable battery power supplies are ideal. Uh, they're, they're pretty good. Uh, you can't really beat them. They're very, very low noise and they're isolated, but you have to recharge them all the time. And they're not really practical for something that sits on your bench or sits in one place all the time. For those things, you can uh, you can always be tempted to um, you know put in something like this, a little switching power supply. Now there are very very cheap ones like these ones here. I got off of eBay, and I really only got them to try and check them out. But here's the problem with these. Uh, this at you know at 1.25 amps, this produces 500 millivolts of noise, and this one here is even worse. It's one volt of noise, and on a five volt power supply, that's quite a bit of noise. So yeah, these ones are to be avoided. Uh, they're nice and cheap, very attractive prices on them. I think these ones were both less than $5 each. And you can go up to something like this, this little Mornson unit, and meanwhile also make pretty good, reasonably priced power supplies, but they are a lot more money. However, they produce a lot less noise. I mean, this thing here produces maybe about 50 millivolts of noise at full load, but still producing noise and you know i try to avoid that as much as i can especially in here in my lab i don't like the idea of switching power supplies radiating noise around getting into my oscilloscope readings and stuff like that it, it just it's bad enough in here as it is because a lot of the equipment does have these built into it and i can't really get them out so whenever i build something i try to you know go with a linear power supply and uh here, here's an example so this is just a little linear power supply powering this thing this thing here, it's got its own regulator in it, so I didn't have to put a regulator on this. So all I have here is a, a bridge rectifier, some filter capacitors, and a little transformer. And this is the way I would normally do it. I would put together something on a little bit of a breadboard like this. This is just a generic little board I had made up for building, you know, random little circuits like this. And the reason I don't go and get PC board for this is because this was unique. This was the, this is the only power supply I've made in, uh, in the last few years is exactly like this. So I didn't want to have four or nine spare boards lying around that I'm never going to use unless I have exactly the same solution to solve. So what I've been thinking about is designing something, designing a power supply board like this, you know, a little board like that, that can be used for many different things. So something that is uh, versatile, it can be configured in different ways. It can be figured as a regulated, unregulated, five volts, 12 volts, whatever you want. So that's what I want to do today. And we're going to do it with the help of our friends over PCB Way. They're going to sponsor this video and I'm going to talk about them a little bit more later. As it is right now, I'd like to go up the stairs to my office and I can show you what I have in mind for this and we can design it, do a layout and then go over to PCB Way and order up the boards for it. All right, here we are up in the office. We've got our dip trace open here and we're going to design this little module that can be configured to whatever we want or at least that's my plan so let's have a look here let's start off some terminals we'll have a terminal on the input here we'll have a terminal on the output here and just two pin terminals so this will be AC in and this will be our DC out over here and we're going to need is a bridge rectifier now what I want to do here is I just want to use diodes the reason I want to use diodes is because I can put in different size diodes and diodes uh, such as 1N4000 series or 1N4148s are so ubiquitous and so cheap. So that's what we're going to use. All right. So we configure a bridge rectifier here. This way. This one this way. This way. And this one this way. Let's connect them up. And we can connect up our AC at this point. So we'll have something coming up here. Coming down here. And we want to put some filter capacitors in. But I want uh, I want two different footprints. So in the schematic here, I'm going to put in two different capacitors. You'd only normally put one in. Um, so that these footprints can overlay each other. So if you have a need for a small capacitor, just put it in the small one and if you need it for a bigger capacity, put it into the bigger footprint. We've got an 80 mil radial and we have a 200 mil radial. So we're going to, I'm going to use both of those. So let's get one of those in. And we've got one of these and put it into. 
and regulators. So I want uh, a 78 series regulator and a 78 L series regulator. So we'll get uh, we've got one. This one here has got a large heat sink, so that's the one I'm going to put in for the 78 series regulator. And this is 78L series is a TO92 package, so that go in here. And let's hook all this up now. Now these regulators will need a little capacitor on the output. I don't have to put a little capacitor on the input here because it's going to be very, very close to these capacitors. So the, the specifications of these regulators is that if they're closer to the filter capacitor than three inches, then you don't need a little bypass capacitor on the front of them. But you still need one on the back. We'll put in um, a little ceramic capacitor on the back here and hook it up. And I don't know what this power supply is going to be used for. It's something we have designed to be uh, pretty configurable and fairly generic in nature. So I'm going to put a protection diode across the regulators. And put that across the regulators here. And this gives us two things. So first of all, it gives us protection if we have a regulator in the circuit. And we've hooked it up to something that's already at a higher voltage and the regulator is going to out. And another thing it gives us is that if we just want something that's got no regulation, we can just uh, replace this diode here with a jumper. And that'll give us our output straight out to the AE termination. That's basically it. So we can, we can fit two different size capacitors into it. We can configure the diodes the way we want them. We can put in one in 4000 series. We can put in one in 4148s if we're you know, just using a little 75L series regulator. We can put in whatever voltage regulator we want because we have now the footprints to go either way. We just have to make sure that uh, our transformer will match what we want as far as the regulator goes, what our output is. So generally speaking, you want to have a, a couple of volts over and above the output voltage. Let's work on a layout for this. I'm not going to take you through that process, but uh, let me see what I can come up with and I'll come right back and show you. Okay, so here's the, the layout that I have. Uh, it's, it's quite compact. It's about two inches long and about an inch and a half wide. Here's our input terminal, our output terminal. We've got our diodes here for our bridge rectifier. We've got our two different capacitor patterns there. We've got the 78XX pattern here the 78 LX pattern here and the output capacitor here and our protection diode which of course we can jumper across if we don't need any regulator at all and that's it so I'm going to produce the Gerber files for this and then we'll go over to PCB way and we'll order it Okay, here we are over PCB Way. And remember that if you're if you're new to PCB Way, you get a five dollar coupon. So basically, your first board is going to be free as long as it's under one hundred millimeters by one hundred millimeters. So let's go here to instant quote, and we'll go over here to quick order, and we'll add a Gerber file here. But that's the file we want. Send it over there. So yeah, so 2.05 by 1.38 inches, or 52 by 35 millimeters. That's a, a nice size, nice and compact. And uh, let's get it in red. So you choose your color. It's a two-layer board. It's detected that from the Gerber files. It's detected the size. I'm going to get 10 of these. Everything else is okay. The spacing's okay. Hole sizes are okay. Silk screen's okay. Surface finish is okay. Everything else is okay here. Now all I have to do is save that to cart. So here we are. All I have to do is uh, pay for it and they'll manufacture those boards and have them to me in short order. And when they get here, we're going to build one or two of them up and test them out 
have a look at them, see what they're like. I hope that it's going to be very handy for me in the future and putting together these little ad hoc linear power supplies. Because I keep saying I don't like switching power supplies. I don't like the noise. I mean, they're fine for something that's, you know, not going to be in my lab. It's in a permanent position somewhere else, preferably outside my home somewhere. <laughs> but uh, for, my, for anything I build, all the little things I build in my lab, I want these little regulated power supplies. All right, folks, that's all I have for you today. Thanks a lot for coming out. And uh, thanks a lot again to PCBWay for helping us out with this. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.